gang. That is, without a shadow of a doubt, the worst Mark Hamill as the Joker impersonation ever committed to a YouTube video. Well, it's garish, ugly, and smells like piss. My humblest apologies. That will never happen again. <laughs> this is awkward. Uh, I am here with a Blu-ray unboxing slash movie review of the Best Buy exclusive Steel Book Edition of Batman The Killing Joke. Of course, based on the seminal graphic novel of the same name by Alan Moore and Brian Boland. I have to apologize up front because I had absolutely no idea that this movie was actually screened in a theater locally here in the city on July 25th. If I knew that they were going to do a theatrical presentation of this film, I would have rushed to the theater, went and saw it, and I would have posted a review of this ASAP afterwards. So, for some stupid reason, I knew none of that. So, that's why I have decided to purchase the Blu-ray, do a little unboxing of it, and talk about its contents, as well as the quality of the film. And I guess on a positive, I saved 12 bucks on seat in the theater, which I could go towards purchasing the $20 Blu-ray. Eh, it all worked out. So here we go, I am going to pop this bad boy into my Blu-ray player, I'm going to watch it. All it takes is one bad day. <laughs> and then we're going to follow it up with a little bit of a review and an unboxing of this bad boy. You know that, don't you? What say you, Mulder? Are you excited to see Batman the Killing Joke? Oh, you're, are you excited? I just, I need to know. I think that's a yes. Uh, I just finished watching Batman the Killing Joke on Blu-ray. So why don't we maybe dive into uh, some of the Blu-ray features themselves first. I really got to give it up for the Best Buy Steelbook Edition Blu-rays. This thing is a work of art. Look at this, how beautiful it is. And the back art, boom, that is sensational. As you can see here, the uh, Best Buy Steelbook Edition Batman the Killing Joke Blu-ray comes with, yes, a Blu-ray copy, a DVD copy, and the obligatory digital HD copy. And it is, of course, based on the number one New York Times best-selling graphic novel. That is, of course, if you had no idea about that before you bought this. <laughs> okay, so for the special features themselves, we have Batman the Killing Joke, the many shades of the Joker featurette. We got Madness set to music featurette. From the DC Comics Vault, two bonus cartoons. Interesting that they refer to them as cartoons. That's pretty standard for uh, most of the DC animated film releases. Plus, we get a sneak peek at DC Universe's next animated movie. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay, so this gave me a bit of a chuckle. The Canadian Home Video Ratings Classification Board gave Batman the Killing Joke a 14A. So, suck on that, MPAA R rating. This is a film of some really strange contradictions. Um, I'm going to preface this review by saying that I have uh, I have enjoyed a large majority of the DC uh, animated film adaptations of their iconic comic books and graphic novels. I have a very large uh, Batman Blu-ray collection in general. I also own a large majority of the previous DC animated films. Uh, I think recent ones like the uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns animated uh, film adaptation is actually 
despite uh, taking a few liberties with the source material, is really shockingly faithful and really quite well rendered. And I, I really admired the ambition uh, of that animated film. So I just want to let you know where I actually come from when it comes to these DC animated films in general before I start talking about uh, The Killing Joke. So the Killing Joke, I think, is one of the most important Batman comic book stories, graphic novels, if you would, uh, of all time. I think that in, uh, married together with The Dark Knight Returns from Frank Miller in the 1980s, it really radically transformed the general lay uh, public's perception of the Batman character. Because quite frankly, before these grittier takes on Batman in the 1980s, Batman was still widely considered uh, to be the campy 1960s TV series uh, Adam West era Batman. <laughs> Comic book graphic novels like these sort of help to really eradicate that general perception of the Batman character. Right from the very get-go, it becomes readily apparent that this version <laughs> of The Killing Joke does not start in the same manner that the graphic novel does. Just to be on the safe side, I went back to the graphic novel to make sure that it didn't start this way and... Nope. So the film opens with this massively long prologue. It should be noted that this film is an hour and 16 minutes long. So that's standard length for most DC animated films, but for the first 30 plus minutes, it is all new material that has nothing to do with the beginning of the graphic novel. And it essentially is trying to embellish Barbara Gordon slash Batgirl as a character within the larger framework of the story. So you don't like it. And it shows her tumultuous relationship that has a definitive, shall we say, sexual component. I'm crazy for it. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say there. Uh, with Bruce Wayne and Batman as they embark on this mission to take down uh, some mobsters. And I can certainly understand why the makers f had a noble-minded um, aspiration to include this in the film because, I mean, it certainly could be said that the Barbara Gordon character in the original graphic novel was a somewhat marginalized character um, that was maybe more used as a plot point to propel the narrative forward. Having said that though, the opening sections of Batman the Killing Joke, the animated movie, um, they really don't match the macabre tone of Alan Moore's graphic novel in any real way. If anything, it's sort of, I hate to say this, but it feels a little like a CW superhero melodrama for 31 minutes, and then it segues into what we all know as the beginning of the graphic novel. Do you realize what you've set free? Not a good sign. I appreciate what the makers were trying to do here, but it just feels a little disingenuous to the whole, and it doesn't really fit or match the overall tone. I'm a connoisseur when it comes to eau de toilette. Um, and despite the fact that the voice work by uh, Tara Strong as Batgirl and uh, Kevin Conroy as Batman are on point and superb, it felt like a completely different movie for 30 minutes. And I'm absolutely positive that die hard fundamentalists of the graphic novel are not going to enjoy these opening sections. <laughs> After 31 minutes, the movie kicks right in to a very faithful adaptation of Alan Moore's graphic novel in not only the shots, but in the lines of dialogue and the character interactions and so forth. So, Listen to me. He's been in custody for two years. If we can prove what we found today... He'll confess. He's insane. It's a mistake to think you know what he'll do. Hello. Listen to me. This is life and death. Mine or yours. Our relationship, it's fatal. But I don't want your murder on my... Uh, on those levels, Batman the Killing Joke is 
very good. It's also it's very faithful, and it really benefits from paying faithful homage to the source material. So on those levels, this film is dynamite great. The voice performances, of course, they hardly need any embellishment. I mean, when people think of great Batman performers, uh, Kevin Conroy's name is somehow automatically not mentioned with the likes of like Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, and so forth because he's a voice actor and that somehow incredulously means that he's not uh, meant to be included with the roster of other Batman actors. But that's unfair because to me, Kevin Conroy is the definitive Batman actor. Doesn't matter if he appears in front of the camera or behind the scenes as a voice actor. He is so good as Batman and The Killing Joke just reinforces his stature as one of the iconic Batman performers of all time. Now you stinking little stain. I'm going to ask you politely one last time. Where is he? And a little needs to be said again about Mark Hamill as the Joker. I think he is given substantially more to do, obviously, with this film, considering its backstory, because it's trying to embellish where the Joker came from and so forth, uh, with his voice performance. And again, he just knocks it completely out of the park, and he nails every scene. Uh, he captures both the fanatical craziness of the Joker, obviously, but also the subtle and more tender moments featuring the backstory of where the Joker came from. So it's really a tour de force voice, voice performance. <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? There are a few neg other negative things, though, I have to mention about the film. The film's animation style feels at times very antiquated and stilted. I do realize that these animated films certainly have to work within the budgetary restraints that are given to them. These are not theatrical uh, budgeted films. They're, they're not given a lot of resources to work with. So I can appreciate that, you know, these films are not gonna look as crisp and pristine as the animated films that get, you know, thrown out at cineplexes year, year in, year out. <laughs> Tell me what I'm doing here. You're going mad. Where is he? Compared to the previous DC cinematic animated films that have come before it, um, I found the animation sometimes weak. Uh, sometimes poorly rendered, lacking in detail. Uh, there are times when like frames seem to skip a beat, which is really, really peculiar. I'm here because I need to be. Um, you would think that adapting probably the second most important Batman graphic novel of all time would have meant that they would have to bring their A game when it came to the animation. And unfortunately, they really don't. And I, for one, am kind of relieved that I didn't go and see this movie in a cinema because seeing this film projected on a giant screen, it probably would have made the inherent flaws of the animation stick out like a sore thumb that much more. So you don't like it? I guess when, you, when it really boils down to it is Batman the Killing Joke is a film that I admired in modest dosages for its final 35, 40 minutes because it was a very faithful adaptation of the graphic novel. But the first 30 minutes, I am guaranteeing you, are going to polarize a lot of people. Um, I really have a lot of respect for what they're trying to do by embellishing the Barbara Gordon character and fleshing out her relationship with Batman and maybe giving Batman uh, more of a personal motive to go after the Joker, but that really isn't needed in the film. I can also understand that The Killing Joke is a very short graphic novel, and maybe the makers thought that they needed to add filler to stretch it out to 65, 70 plus minutes. Maybe they forgot to ask themselves that maybe a DC animated film doesn't have to be 70 minutes. This movie could have been 55, 60 minutes, and it would have been a really good adaptation of The Killing Joke. So. There's a lot of problems with that opening um, 30 minutes, and it takes some very interesting detours, especially with Batman and Batgirl, that many people may cry a strong resounding foul to. No! So I guess in closing, if you're like a Batman collector as I am, owning this seems like a no-brainer. The Best Buy Steel Book Edition is a gorgeous Blu-ray. And of course, there's a shot of the inside of the Steel Book Edition. You can see the DVD copy as well as the Blu-ray copy of Batman The Killing Joke. I would say add it to your collection, but be forewarned, those first 30 minutes, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I have a funny suspicion that there's going to be more people disliking it than liking it, so.
Also, I could really gauge how engaged my cat Mulder was in the first 30 minutes of this film, and I think he re pretty much reiterates my own reaction to it as well. Thank you very much for watching my unboxing slash Blu-ray review of the Steel Book Best Buy exclusive Batman The Killing Joke. Be sure to let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of the original graphic novel. If you could also let me know what your favorite Alan Moore graphic novels are, that would be fantastic. Let me know what your favorite Batman animated film adaptations are. If you could hit that like button at the bottom, I would really appreciate it. More importantly, if you could hit that subscribe button, that would mean the absolute world to me. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you at the movies. Okay. Okay, that's great.